Hey, thanks for tuning in. So tonight I'm going to be showing uh, beginning programmers how to uh, use war menus to create a user interface. Um, creating a user interface is one of the challenges whenever you're first starting programming and war menus is one of the best ones, easiest ones that I've found. Um, I'm also going to be showing you how to move uh, variables between the client and the server and how that process works. And um, let's get into it. So I've set up a folder that has uh, a bunch of blank files in it. Um, but this is the basic setup you need to get started with this program. So we need an FX manifest. We've got a server folder that has a server file inside of it. And we got a client folder with our blips, our client Lua, and our war menu. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to Rec Shack Gaming who wrote a um, bait shop script that I read to figure out how to do this so this is not exactly his uh, bait shop script but I used some of his information to do this so the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, bring in the war menu uh, script and I can tell you that this is um, going to be placed in the links below the video and I do not fully understand how all of this works. So um, you can pull this file uh, from the GitHub link that's going to be posted with the video. And um, it's a very large script. Uh, and I, as far as I know, Rex Shack Gaming uh, created this script because I pulled it from Bait Shop. It's basically your base menu that you need, uh, the base program you need to create your war menus. I'm not going to go through this code because uh, I would be lying to you if I told you I understood how it works, but this base script is what allows you to create the war menus. So thanks Rex Shack Gaming for creating Bait Shop and making it available to everyone. Oh, yeah, save that. Okay, so now let's talk about stuff that I do understand. So <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is to set up locations on the map where we can uh, have our interaction points for our menus. Um, I did this video once before and I was typing everything and it took forever so tonight we're just going to do pasting and I'm going to explain what I just pasted. So the very first thing we got to define our variables. Uh, our variables blips and our blip is going to have a name. It's going to show up you know on the map. It's going to have a sprite. I'm not exactly sure uh, what the sprite is to be totally honest. I don't know. It's a, I think it's a native thing. Don't worry about it. This native right here is hash, and this is uh, the blip hash. <coughs> and you can find it um, at uh, the discoveries link that's going to be posted below the video. You can find all of the blips that are available in RedM. And then uh, these are the locations you want your x coordinate, your y coordinate, and your z coordinate. These can be anywhere. These are just going to be a location that when you walk into it, um, you actually get the menu pop up the prompt. So they, they can be next to a butcher shop. They can be out in the middle of a field. It doesn't matter. Um, whenever you get within uh, a certain distance of these coordinates, it's going to prompt you if you want to pop up the war menu. And then we have to put those on the map. And so we're going to use this code right here. And again, all of this is available in the link below to the GitHub. This uh, entire finished product will be there for you to download and, and use. So this uh, create thread is uh, basically a function that's going to run um, whenever the script is launched. And it's going to do a loop. And so it's going to be a for loop. And this is something that... Uh, it took, it took me a long time to understand, and uh, I think I'm there now, so I'm going to try to explain it as best I can. So on a for loop, your first variable can be pretty much anything you want. Uh, it could be an underscore, an i, whatever. You just have to reference it down below. And info is going to be, for each iteration, the things that are there. So for each iteration of this loop, it's going to pull back a blip. And this is blips because it's coming from 
where we entered it up here. So for each iteration you're going to set up a local variable for a blip and this is a native. I don't know uh, exactly what it is. You could search for it on the uh, reference below the discoveries. Um, but that's the native that's going to create the uh, blip. And so um, the first variable is going to be your hash. So that's going to be your, your uh, hash ID for the blip icon that you want to use. And then it's going to get your coordinates. Okay. And then it's going to set the blip sprite. And this blip, that's part of the native functions for redm. This is not blips. This is blip. That's part of the command. And so you have to have your uh, set blip sprite, a blip, the sprite, and then a one means that it's turned on. And then you set your blip scale. Again, this is blip. This is a native. Uh, and then 0.2 is the scale. You can make it bigger or smaller by changing the number. And then you're going to run a native function. And this is just the syntax for the native function. Uh, you got your native execution, which is going to be doing putting the blips on the map and storing them in the cache or whatever. And this is part of the native also, blip again. It's not blips. It's just blip. And info name, so this is going to put the prompt on the map. Whenever you click on it, you know what it says. It's going to say meet shop. And that's all you need for your blips. So this file is done. So now we're going to go to the client Lua. So every time you're starting a client Lua, uh, if you're doing a war menu, you have to have this code at the top. This is a lot like the data code uh, that you have to use on your server side if you want to grab data from the config, the inventory config. Okay, so this uh, this code right here is just going to go back to red MRP menu base, get data, and it's going to um, give you your menu data in a call, and it's it's just got to be there. I can't tell you exactly how it works. We'd have to go dig through that code, but uh, just trust me. If you're doing a war menu, you need that on top. The next thing we want to do is assign our variables. So since we're building a butcher shop, the variables that we're looking for is the price for these different items so that we can populate the shop with uh, prices. And I'm setting them equal to zero because I'm actually going to pull them from the uh, red MRP inventory later. But uh, I have to define them as something so that the script knows that it's looking for a variable that's an integer. <coughs> All right. So now we need to add our butcher locations, and there's probably a lot of ways to do this um, that are more technical, such as doing a loop like we did in blips. But um, this works too, and this is easy. So I just put in 10 locations. These are the same as my blips. Okay. And this is going to be the actual location where the prompt pops up. So over here, these locations populate your map with a blip. These locations add a prompt at the location. All right. That should be pretty self-explanatory, just X, Y, Z. All right. And then I'm going to want to get these prices. I'm going to want to fetch those from I, I gotta fetch those okay now this is going to be uh, a function that we do and it's going to be called from elsewhere we're actually gonna have to call this uh, this event from the server uh, we'll talk about that later but uh, after the function you see all of these um, variables okay and I have them set up as a different name because I don't want them to um, mess up anything on the client side by having the same variable name uh, I don't want to reassign any variables I'm just bringing these over so <clears throat> the way this works is when you write the actual call for the function you're gonna send these variables 
and we'll talk more about it later. But basically I'm fetching the all these prices from the server, from the red MRP inventory on the server side. And then I'm going to execute this function and send those variables over because you can't pull from the red MRP inventory on the client side. You have to pull it on the server side. And then uh, basically I'm going to go through here. I don't need that one. And I'm going to assign these variables. So we got big game price, big game price. And then we're going to assign it the actual price from the config that we sent over. And then we're going to print it just so that it pops up on our, uh, on our F8 console. So we can make sure that we got a price for all these. It's a uh, good for troubleshooting to just throw in a print. Anytime you're having trouble with a script, I recommend just put in a print message and help you identify where your problems are. So that's pretty much it. We've assigned all of our we've signed all of our prices now. Well, sort of. We still have to do stuff on the uh, server side, but we'll do that later. We're going to do the whole client first. So now I want to start the butcher shop, and so I, I'm, this is going to be for the war menu. All right. So for the war menu, I need a variable called active. I need a variable called shop prompt. I need a variable for has already entered the marker and a variable for last zone. This is a way to assign more than one variable at a time with the comma there. And then my current zone is nil. And then uh, to set up the war, war menu, you have to do a setup shop prompt. All right. And this is going to be the prompt that pops up when you walk into one of these coordinates. And it's a, it's a thread function. And it's going to, the local string here is going to be open butcher shop. So that's going to be what pops up on your screen when you enter the coordinates. And then we're going to have pull our shop prompt right here. And it's going to tell it to uh, begin the shop prompt, which means it's going to pop it up. And, um, to set the control action this is a native this means that's the button you're going to press to activate the prompt and in our case uh, this native is your left alt button and then we're going to have a string uh, create variable string literal string this is just the native command to pop up this so this is a native command it always has to say literal string and uh I'm not sure, i think 10 is I don't know what 10 is, uh, but the string is the text that's going to pop up. I'm not sure what that first variable is, but uh, 10 works. So there's that. <laughs> and then we're going to set the text. It's going to be the shop prop string. And all of this stuff is, is basically native stuff that has to take place. Uh, we're going to set it as enabled false. That means that it hasn't been activated. We're going to set it as visible false because uh, it hasn't been, the area hasn't been walked into yet. If you, uh, you prompt set to hold true, that means that you have to hold the left alt button when you get into the area in order to uh, open the menu. And then uh, we're just ending, that means that's the end of the prompt. So there's nothing else going to happen. When you walk into the area, you're going to get this message on your screen. And uh, that's it. That's all we want to do here. There's mud. All right, so now we're going to have to add a couple of event handlers. I'm going to add two of them. So our first one is for has entered marker. This is just going to be called whenever the player walks into the, the blip area. And it's going to change their zone from current zone to zone. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later whenever we get to the portion where we actually enter the, the zone. And then uh, next we're going to have, we, we want to check whenever the player exits the marker. So if, uh, if it's active, then we set the, if it's active, that means that somebody has already interacted. They've, if it's active, that means somebody has entered the blip area. They've held their left alt and opened the menu. So if the menu is open, we don't want to see the prompt anymore. So we want to uh, disable it and we want to uh, hide it and we want it to be inactive. 
and uh, if they walk out of the area we want it to because they've exited the marker we want it to close the menu and make the current zone nil so that it basically resets it so if the player walks back into the blip area then the prompt will pop up again so basically this is saying if they've already activated the menu close the prompt if they walk out of the area close the prompt okay simple enough all right here's our next piece of code here so this is going to set up the shot prompt and this is going to be how you check if the player's in the area so it's going to be a while true do loop that means it's going to be running since it's just a citizen create thread that means that uh, from the time the uh, the script is launched it's going to start this loop and it's going to wait zero milliseconds so it's going to be checking constantly if a player is in the uh, coordinate area so you want to uh, get, since we're on the client side, we want to use player pet ID to find out which player uh, it is. And then once we've identified the player, we can get their coordinates for the player. So this is going to, this get entity chords is going to return to the, uh, to the server, uh, what, uh, what their coordinates are. And then local is in marker current zone equals false. So the script is launched, not, the player is not there yet. And so both of these uh, variables are false. Then we're going to run a loop. And so for KV in Paris Butcher Shop, and Butcher Shop is all of our blips up here, or all of our uh, locations. So for uh, it's, this, is, this loop is running through and checking all of those chords against our player's chords distance checks what the distance is between our player player chords and our shop chords so K is essentially player and V is essentially butcher shop so the players chord X players chord Y players chord Z and then it's checking against the shop V X Y Z if that distance is less than 1.5 meters, then they are in the marker. It's true. Their current zone is the butcher shop, and their last zone is the butcher shop. All right. So it's going to do that loop, and then it's going to check: Are they in the marker? And if we said if they were in the marker, then that's true. And not has already entered marker, so that means that they uh, they haven't uh, they haven't um, open the menu essentially then uh, then it makes the has already entered true because they've entered the zone and it's going to trigger the event the has entered marker that we put up here it's just going to take change the current zone to zone and this is sending the variable current zone and it's catching that variable as zone but it's still it's the current zone they just redefined it as zone and then they said the current zone equals zone that's just a way to send it receive it and register it all right so if they're not in the marker but they have already entered the marker then we don't need the has already entered marker anymore it's false because we don't want to do that again and the zone is just last zone because we we told it this happens then we're in the butcher shop and so this is just going to tell you that you're in the butcher shop location and what that does is that keeps it from popping the prompt back up so the prompt will pop up the first time you enter the zone if you open the menu the prompt goes away if you leave the area the prompt goes away so that's basically what this is doing all right so now we're going to create our war menu because we've got it we've been able to identify if the players in the zone or not we've given them a prompt to open the menu now they have to have a menu to open so this is how you create a war menu you have a war menu create menu is going to be your master uh, menu name and we're going to call it the butcher shop and it's going to pop up some text butcher shop that's what's going to print at the top of the menu interaction and then we want to set a subtitle for the butcher shop that says buy and sell meat so the menu is going to open it's going to say butcher shop at the top and then below butcher shop it's going to say buy and sell meat and then the sub menus are going to be our actual buttons 
So we're going to have a button for buying uh, raw meat. We could throw raw in there if we wanted to. And we're going to have an action to sell raw meat. And then we're going to have an action to buy cooked meat. And a button to buy or to sell cooked meat. Um, the first one is your button's name. The second one is the menu that it's assigned to. And the third one is the text that shows up on the button. All right. Now we're going to uh, build our first sub menu. Uh, and this war menu display actually goes, oh, I should have pasted it before it goes here, right below that. I'll put a space there to keep it separated. So this is our first button, that's our buy button. So uh, whenever they open the buy button, it's going to give them the option to buy big game meat, and it's going to show them the price. So the way this works is this is just text that's going to pop up on the menu. And then the dot dot is the same as an ampersand in Excel. It's a concatenate. So and then it's going to print the big game price. So on the screen, they're going to see by big when they when they that button pops up, it's going to say buy big game meat for uh, this price. And again, the dot dot is how you concatenate uh, stuff. You don't use an ampersand or anything like that. You just use dot dot, and that's a concatenate. So if they click the first button, then it's going to trigger a server event called meat shop buy. And the reason it's a server event is because we're going to be manipulating their inventory. And you can't do that on the client side. You have to do that on the server side. Okay. So if they click the button, then they're going to get the price. We're going to send the price over to the server. We're going to send the product's name to the server. And uh, the zero is... Don't remember we'll have to look whenever we get over on the server side so we have a button for each meat type and this is to buy raw meat and this is under the buy menu and at the bottom of our menu we've got the display and then our second menu is going to be for the sell button and it's the exact same process uh, so First is the main menu open, okay? Then if you click the buy button, that's your uh, LSIF, then you're gonna be able to select from the buy raw meat category. If you click the sell button, then you're gonna be able to uh, interact with the sell buttons. And then uh, in the interest of time, we're gonna go ahead and add our other two buttons at one shot. So we added our buy big game meat, or our buy cooked meat, and we added our sell cooked meat, and they all have events. Now, uh, one thing that I should talk about is this, this uh, information right here. So again, this is your text and your button, and then before we just had the price, because the price that we fetched from the server was just the raw meat price. Well, this is to, that's to purchase the, the raw meat. To sell the raw meat, I want it to be less than the purchase price. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.75. That means it's going to be 25% less than the, the uh, than to purchase the meat. So you can't just buy meat and sell it and make money. You're always going to lose 25% if you try to do that. Math.4 is going to prevent, if, if we just do this, then we could end up with a whole lot of decimal places, but we're talking about dollars and cents, so we only want two decimal places. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to use this math.4. That's gonna round this times 0.75 times big game price. That's gonna round it to the lowest integer. All right, but it could be uh, just cents, and so that would round it to zero. I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna multiply it by 100. All right, so now my math floor is rounding this entire statement to the lowest integer. So say it was 50 cents, it would round it to 50. Well, I don't want it to be 50 for the price, so I divide, so I take all of this. Well, so the math.4 interacts with these two uh, 
parentheses. Okay, so that's what's being rounded. So I want to take that rounded number, which is 50, say, if it was 50 cents, and then I divide it by 100, and that takes it back to 50 cents. So this is just a, uh, a way to ensure that you always end up with two decimal places. Okay? And I did that uh, for the buy cooked. I want the buy cooked to be 65% more than buying it raw. So I multiplied it by 1 times 0.65. And I want the to sell the cooked price for the same price it cost me to buy raw. So if a player buys raw and cooks it, he's going to break even. It's just to pre prevent people from farming the butcher shop. All right. So now all of our buttons are defined, and we can end this thread. And I'm missing something. It's missing here. So if we click on this one, where does it go to? It goes to there. So I've got an extra end here somewhere. Let me just highlight all the other code instead of trying to search for where I missed a copy. All that means is somewhere in here, I either am missing an else if or an if or something. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I see where it's at. At the very top of the thread, we needed uh, an if statement. Let me uh, do proper formatting and tab these things over. Yeah, so at the very start of this function, I missed, oops, I missed this, what the hell? Uh, we're checking if the war menu is opened. So that means the player has held the button to open the war menu. So we want to make sure the menu is open and then we populate the menu with all the buttons. And I've still got it, shit. Still got a problem. If oh, dang it! Wow, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Ignore that. That was in the wrong place. It's got to go here because we have to run a loop. So this creates the buttons in the menu, just like I said the first time. All right, and then we have to run a loop to interact with the menu. So. If the war menu is opened, that means we've done our prompt interaction to open the menu. Then we have these options, which is, means if you click on the button, and then if you click on the buy raw meat button, then it's going to activate the buy button. So I'm sorry about that. But that should be clear. Uh, before, nothing would have happened because there was no uh, statement saying, did the player click the button? Uh, this loop is just checking and watching what the player does and whenever he clicks one of these four buttons Then it, it will go down and say uh, Which button did they click? Uh, if they clicked buy then the buy menu is open and you got all the buy buttons All right, now oh, everything's good Sorry about that A little confusing, but uh, we're almost there. We're almost done with the client All right, the next thing we have to do is determine uh, if the if the player holds the button or not to open the shop prompt. So we said that we were going to hold left alt up whenever we defined the prompt. And now this uh, loop right here is checking to see if the player entered the zone and held the button. So uh, if they're in the current zone and it's not active, the menu is not active, then we're going to show the prompt and we're going to set it to visible. And then as soon as we do that, then active is true. So then it's going to start, once it's true in this loop, it's going to skip this statement and it's going to watch for them to press the button. So if they hold the left alt button, then we're going to tr trigger an event to fetch the prices and we're going to wait a little bit of time so that the prices can populate. This is one second, 1000 milliseconds. 
and then we're gonna after we've waited for the prices to populate then we're gonna open the menu and then we're gonna display the menu and then we're gonna turn the prompt off because we don't need to see the prompt anymore because we've already held the button and we're gonna make our current zone nil and that's just gonna keep the prompt from popping up and then for the loop it's gonna wait five milliseconds before it runs the loop and that means the player whenever he walks into the zone within five milliseconds of getting within the blip zone it'll pop up the prompt all right and finally uh, I don't call this anywhere and I'm not sure what the purpose is but it was in uh, rec shop gaming's original um, bait shop script and it, it may be it's got a bunch of native stuff in here so you may just have to have it for everything to work properly um, but uh, I don't call this anywhere so I'm not sure exactly what it does but it was there in the original script and I chose not to take it out because I didn't know what it does and I advise you to do the same and now we are done with our client Lua so we have our blips Lua where we uh, put blips on the map we have our client Lua where we created our interaction menus and we have this uh, incredible uh, war menu program that uh, Rex Shack Gaming uh, provided us with so thanks Rex Shack again all right so now we need to do things whenever those buttons are pressed so on your server side if you're going to be working with inventory you have to have this statement at the top this is part of the uh, built-in red MRP stuff so you have to have that in order to uh, get item data and then we're going to need some variables here and it's the variables that we want to send over it's all of our big game prices it's all of our meat prices so if a player hits that first button that first button is to buy raw meat so uh, on whenever the, they are interacting with the butcher shop the first option is to buy raw meat and so if that player clicks the buy raw meat button we launch this uh, event and we have to add an event handler and these are the variables that it receives oh, okay so the zero was level all right these are the variables that it receives so let's talk about that for a second if you're sending from client to server this is the button they pit press they pressed uh, buy raw big game so we're going to send to the server the big game price we're going to tell the server that the item they're purchasing is big game and we're going to tell the uh, server that their level is zero that they only have to have a zero level in order to purchase this so if you wanted to make it where an experienced hunter is the only one that can sell big game you would just change your level and then it would be based off of their xp but it's a butcher shop so i want everybody to have access uh, so we're going to make the level zero so we've sent over our price our item and our level and then we're going to trigger this uh, red mrp event this is back to the uh, inventory of red mrp and uh, we, we want to send to that the source and the user so it knows which user is trying to interact with the inventory and then we're going to define that user uh, with an identifier so this is uh, getting the user's identifier which will be like their uh, it'll be their steam ID I believe and then it's going to grab their level to figure out what level they are to make sure they're able to purchase the uh, item which is handy if you're trying to make it you know tiered pricing for like uh, weapons or something but for meat we don't care everybody can sell meat and then we're going to get item info and we're going to do data that get item data for the item and the item is big game meat because that's what we sent over uh, one more thing to mention real quick if you're a beginner you might not understand how this works so these are the variables that are received they don't have to be named the same this is variable one variable two variable three you can send anything you want over and it's going to arrive in the order you sent it and then you can assign it a new name in the order you sent it so we know that we sent the big game price the item name and the level and so we're going to call it the price the item and the level but we could call it whatever we wanted to we could call it uh, p1 i3 xyz it doesn't matter you can call it whatever you want 
you just have to call it the same thing when you reference it below. So for price, we're referencing it here and here. For item, we're referencing it here, here. And for level, we're only referencing it here, okay? So now we've grabbed information on the item, uh, on the player and the item that we sent over. And then we're gonna check if the user's got enough money to buy the item. So we're gonna get the money that the user is currently holding. And if it's greater than or equal to the price of the item, then he's gonna be able to purchase it. So if that's true, then we're gonna check if their level is high enough to purchase the item. In this case, it's zero, so everybody can purchase it. And so then we're gonna take their money uh, for the item. So uh, whatever the price is of the big game meet, we're going to remove that from their uh, wallet and then we're going to get some uh, uh, item data so item info and item data are two different things okay so for item info you got to get item data for the item for the item data you get item data you, you data get item and then you want to tell it it's for the player and you want to tell the item you're looking for this item data is for the items in the player's inventory. This item info is for the item in the red MRP inventory config. So this is going to return the items label, weight, price, um, any tags that you have in there is going to return all those tags. This is only going to tell you does the player have the item, yes or no? How much of it does he have? Okay. And so we're going to print the item data item amount. So that's going to tell you how much uh, the user has in their inventory. In this case, we're buying, so it's not it's not really necessary. All right. Um, I just set it up because I, I check this in every one, so it's easier to just copy it, right? So basically, this is not needed. Okay. Except I'm going to use it in my alert, so that's why it's here. Okay. But we'll get there in a second. All right. So I'm going to. This is a print item data dot item amount. This is going to go to your server, uh, to your TX admin menu or uh, control panel, and it's going to tell you how much of the particular item the player has, and it's just uh, for troubleshooting. And then we're going to add one of whatever they bought to their inventory, and then we're going to trigger a client event to notify the player that they bought something. So this is going to reference the uh, red MRP notification. It's going to say for it, the source just tells it that it's the player that clicked the button and it's going to tell them that they bought and then they're going to concatenate. So it's going to be you bought item info label comes from here. So that's going to tell you big game meat. And however you have it, instead of just being the name of the item that you have in the config, it's going to give you the label. So like what you called it. Um, it's going to show up for three seconds and it's going, to, it's going to be a success message, so it'll be a green message. If you weren't a high enough level, it'll tell you uh, you're not high enough level. If you don't have enough money, it's going to tell you you can't buy it because you don't have enough money. So there you go. So now, whenever the player clicks the buy button for buy big game meat or any of those items uh, in the raw meat tab, it's going to uh, do it here. It's going to sell it to them, and uh, they can send it, it, it because we used uh, because we used um, we sent variables as one, two, three. These can be anything, and this still works. So it doesn't have to be specific to the exact item. It can uh, just be anything that they click over there. So we also need our uh, sell raw meat and our buy cooked meat and sell cooked meat. So we'll just do them all at one time. There is a, a little bit different process if you're selling as opposed to buying okay so uh, th this in this case they're selling cooked meat uh, so we're just pulling the price and the meat uh, we don't care the level because anybody can sell so I did I just removed level from this that way everybody can sell the meat and uh, we're not checking for a level um, we're gonna print uh, this is a troubleshoot it's gonna tell us the price and the meat just to make sure that these are populated uh, in case we have any error messages, anything's nil, we can go back and figure out why. And then we're going to look up the item, and we have to put this, uh, we have to put these quotes around the parentheses because in the config, 
uh, it's it's not just called uh, if we just put meat then it's just going to return say it was cooked big game that's what it's going to return all right and that doesn't mean anything to these other uh, steps down here it's got to have the quotes like that for it to be recognized where we use it below uh, like here all right so we're adding those little quotes we're adding those little single quotes so that it's in the proper format. So this is just concatenating those little quotes around me. All right, and then we're going to print the lookup item just to make sure that worked. Uh, local source because the the server wants to know who the player is that's uh, sending this command. And then we're going to look up the item info for data get item meet, and that's why we had to do this because if we just had big game meet here, it wouldn't find anything, and we'd get a nil back. Uh, and then we're going to trigger uh, get player from ID source function user, and this is going to uh, this is going to get the player's information uh, from the server. And we're going to look up the item data get item for I, I changed source there source equals source, and it's going to be looking for the big game meet cook big game meet. And then we're going to do another print here just for troubleshooting. And then uh, we're going to calculate, figure out how many items of this source the player has. Because remember, data.getItem gets the player's inventory. So this is going to tell us how many of the cooked game meat the player has. And that's going to be our total item. And then we're going to print that just for troubleshooting to make sure they had, had something in their inventory. And so if that's greater than one, then we're going to sell all of them. So we're going to take the total item. Let's say they had five times the price and uh, so it's gonna be if it's a dollar they get five dollars and then we're gonna uh, give them five XP for selling five cooked meat and then we're gonna add money the total money which is uh, however many items they had times the price we're gonna add XP for however many items they had times uh, one because we didn't do any math it's just how many items they had gives them XP and then we're going to remove those items from their inventory and we're going to remove all of them. Uh, you could change this to one if you only wanted to do one, uh, but usually if somebody's selling raw meat or cooked meat or anything, if they're selling it, they want to sell all of it. So there you go. And then we're going to uh, trigger a message to tell them how much it's going to tell. The source tells the uh, message that is talking to the player that clicked the button and they sold however many items of whatever item it was for however much money they got and they got this much XP. If uh, they didn't have any of that item, it's going to tell them they didn't have any. And so that's that's how you do the sell. The shops are both the same and the sells are both the same. Oh, I'm sorry, the buys are both the same and the sells are both the same. So we have two sell buttons, two buy buttons. They're all in here. Now the one thing that we did call earlier that we need to talk about now is uh, fetching the price. And once we fetch the price, we've got to send it back to the client. All right. So butcher uh, fetch raw price. If we go back to our clue, to our uh, client Lula, you'll remember at the top up here. The very first thing we did was to fetch these prices. We assigned them a value of zero, and then we fetched them. All right. Now these are the variables that we're going to receive on the client, and uh, this is where we're going to send them. But before we send them, we have to fetch them. So we do our local source equals source. We do our. Uh, this is the same as data info, but since I'm fetching several variables, I call them each by whatever meat type it is. And we're going to do that datum .get item data, and then there you can see there's the quotes around the big game, uh, which is why we did that whole step right here. All right, and then we're going to print the big game info price by. And uh, price buy is not something that's defaulted into your config, so you're going to have to add buy price tag, uh, a price buy tag to all of your items that you want to be able to sell here. And 
we're going to uh, concatenate to that the uh, label. And this, these prints are always just, uh, they're just to troubleshoot to make sure that we're getting variables. So each time we pull one, we print it just to make sure we got it. And that, again, all these prints are just troubleshooting. And then our big game price is going to be equal to our big game info dot price by big game info. We fetched the price uh, whenever we did this data get item data. So we're uh, that's where we pulled it, right? And we right here we were just checking to make sure we got it. So. Uh, this is where we're going to uh, assign it. So that value we pulled, we're just assigning to big game price. All right. We do that for all the meets. We uh, tell we want to do some troubleshooting, so we tell us ourselves that we sent the prices to the client. That means that we've ran through all this. Everything was assigned. There was no nils. The program's still running. And then it's gonna it's gonna trigger the client event to fetch the prices. And then here's all the information that we're sending. And this one right here is important. Anytime that you're sending variables from the server to the client, you have to have source as your first variable. It doesn't send anything over there. It just tells the uh, program which, which player it was that sent the command. Okay. And then we're assigning all of our variables. And I, I did mutton price twice at the bottom. That's why on the client side, there's a blank. Because I got mutton price and then I've got a blank. But you'll notice source is not on the client side. And this is important. All right, pay attention. If you, if you don't understand how to send variables back and forth, this is very important. If you're going from the client to the server, you don't have to tell it source because it knows where it came from because the client side is the individual player. But if you're going from the server back to the client, it's got to know which client to go to. So you have to tell it the source. But once you've told it the source, it doesn't care anymore because it's in the client. So the source is the, whoever it is that's uh, playing, right? So you don't bring that variable over and that variable doesn't get sent. That just tells it where to go. So the first one always has to be source, but you don't have to worry about it. You just have to put it in there so that it goes to the right client. And then all of these prices uh, get sent over. So you'll see that on my client side, big raw big game is my first variable, uh, big game price. And again, I, the reason I call it, it's big game price here because that's the variable I'm using in everything. But whenever I receive it, I don't want to call it big game price because that can cause problems. All right. So I want to give it a different name and then I tell it it's big game price here. Okay. Just to make sure everything's done correctly and it's going to work right. And uh, that's it. That is all there is to it. Uh, this menu is complete. Oh, I'm sorry. We got to do our manifest. So we're not quite done yet. So for the manifest, um, at the top of your manifest, uh, it's just uh, you always got to have this. And you'll notice it's on top of pretty much every uh, script out there. And I need to change this name to a dot Lua. There we go. So this uh, always has to be at the top. And then I'm not going to type these in. I'm just going to copy and paste them and then talk about it. So we, we're going to need server scripts. And for our server, we're going to need server slash server slash tells it that it's in the server uh, folder. And then the file name is server.lua. Okay. And then on our client side, we have three scripts. And order of operations is important, all right? Uh, client first, then more menu, then blips. Um, if you're doing any SQL syncing, you always have to have MySQL async at the top. Uh, if it's not at the top, it won't work. Um, so the order of operations does matter over here, which one loads first. <coughs> in this case, all of these uh, scripts are in the same uh, menu uh, in the same folder, but it still matters because I can tell you if you put more menu above client, it doesn't work. Uh, I tried that. So this is the correct order uh, for these folders. I think blips can be anywhere because it's not referenced by the other two scripts, 
um, the client has to be above war menu. Now we are done and I will uh, go do a quick uh, demonstration on the server for you guys and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are in the, min uh, in the game. Gonna test out our butcher shop menu. I set it up at this table right here, so I just walked into the zone. And you can see on the bottom right of my screen there, we got the open butcher shop. That will mut alt. We hold it, and there's a slight delay. And uh, let's look at the server console. And you can see this is the fetch price troubleshooting that we put in there. So we got uh, big games a dollar fifty, venison's a dollar fifty so on and so forth and we said that the prices were sent to client so our troubleshooting worked there if we hit our F8 we can see that on the client side uh, it did receive all those prices alright so everything's good so here's our menu put your shop at the top buy and sell meat is our label and so if we want to buy raw meat we just hit enter and we can scroll through here and see all those prices did indeed populate. So let's buy some big game meat. We lost $1.50 and we uh, bought a big game meat and uh, let's buy five venison. So we lost $1.50 per venison. Alright, and then we want to sell that raw meat. Uh, sell our big game meat for $1.12. And I sold one because I only had one. You can see in my inventory I've got five venison. So we should sell five venison. And we did. We sold five venison for five sixty. And just to make sure we'll try to sell beef, we don't have any. So we don't have any to sell. And then we can buy cooked alligator for four twelve. We can sell cooked alligator for 250 so we just lost money on that deal but there you go all the menus work uh, there you go you built your first uh, raw uh, war menu butcher shop I uh, appreciate you guys for watching tune in next time we'll have some more uh, some more tutorial videos coming out thank you